welcome back to our channel. So today's video is going to be just a little different than what we normally do. Um, this will be a little bit more along the lines of the first video that I ever posted on this channel. I would like to from time to time hit on certain subjects and give out certain information where it pertains to autism and certain subjects that affect a person on the spectrum. Let me just start by saying first and foremost, I'm not an autism expert. However, I am an expert on my son who happens to be autistic. So really, I hope that whoever comes across this video, they take away some information that could be informative and some information that could give them a different perspective on autism. So I think today what I would like to talk about is stimming. Um, I have touched on this subject, I have done like a synopsis of what stimming is in a couple of my videos, but I would like to go into a little bit more detail about the subject, explain a little bit, especially how it affects Ricky, how he stims. I know that you guys have seen some of it and I urge you to look through my videos and you will see after after I explain <laughs> watch this video and after I explain then go back into um, the, the blogs that we have done and you'll be able to point out and see when he stems but I, I wanted to touch base on this and kind of elaborate a little bit more on what it is and that sort of thing so the first and foremost what is stemming well the best way that I could explain it without getting too I don't know technical or science whatever <laughs> um, is basically when a person stems especially a person on the spectrum when they stem it is a reaction to an emotion or a situation that they are in whether that's their senses being overloaded with input that that's their output if that makes sense but mainly if they are excited if they are upset and the uh, the upset can coincide with the sensory overload that they are experiencing. Happy, confused, nervous, any of those emotions that any neurotypical person would feel, their body, their body, their brain uh, can really decipher what they're feeling and how to deal with that feeling. Their brain chemically can say, oh, if I'm excited, I'm gonna smile, and I'm, uh, I'm gonna get like super excited with my voice, and you know, just express that excitement that way. Or you, like if it's some great news, you go, yeah, yay! That's a sort of a stem, if you think about it because when an autistic person stems, they are expressing that. It's like that emotion bubbles up in their body and their brain can only really understand what they're feeling when that output kind of coincides with the input. Hopefully that's, I mean, that's the best way that I feel I can describe it um, to someone who would ask, well, what is stimming? Well, if an autistic person gets really excited or really upset, they'll rock back and forth. They'll flap their arms really quickly. They'll snap. They'll spin around in circles. They'll do their head like this. They'll squint. Um, 
and then there are certain stems that can be self injurious they hit their head they bite themselves they pinch themselves they scratch themselves um, and that sort of simming uh, from what I understand can be from sensory overload their their brain just can't take in all that information that is coming in whether it's a bright light or a loud sound or a bad smell or uh, an unexpected plain smell that they've never smelled before. I mean, that could be an overload that just puts them into a bad stem. Um, or they could just be frustrated and, and that feeling of frustration is just so overwhelming for their brain that they have to like hit themselves or something like that. Um, that's the best way that I feel like I can explain stimming to someone who has never heard of it before. For Ricky, this is why I wanted to do this type of video. Now, here in the near future, I would like to compile into one video all of his stems so that people can see what it looks like. And it's very different. Not all people on the spectrum have the exact same stems. They do different things that help them with the input. So um, for Ricky, the number one stem that Ricky has done since he was an itty bitty baby was flapping. Now before, in the beginning, he would do it only when he was excited to see someone or if he knew that we were going somewhere getting ready to to go out and go somewhere he would he would like tense up like oh my gosh i'm so excited i'm gonna explode kind of thing you know um and i i just thought he was just really excited that's what it looked like in the very beginning oh my gosh he's so excited to see this person or he's just so excited to go bye bye um that he just can't contain it he's just so excited you know um, but after a while as he got a little older I noticed that he started doing it like I would be folding clothes and he would stand there and he would watch me and he was like mm -hmm. <laughs> he would you know do that and I would be like oh buddy I, you're really excited for me to fold this towel and put it away <laughs> I mean I felt like I had my own little cheerleader and I still do I mean he still does it to this day that is his number one stem is doing his arms and there are times where if he is super excited or super stimulated like if he's watching something um, say like a roller coaster he's got to have his his uh, noise canceling headphones on if we're near a roller coaster but um, if he watches something that's visually stimulating to him and he gets really really into it he'll shake so much that his fingers will start snapping I can't do it <laughs> I don't know how he does it but he gets so excited that once that he starts flapping there's like this clicking noise that he does with his fingers um, and that's the number one stem that he has, that he shows, um, and it's pretty much every single day that he does it. Now, the second stem that Ricky has is really something that he's been doing, I would say, in the last five or six months is when he really started doing this frequently. And it's this noise that he makes. I'm gonna try to. Do, <laughs> I'm gonna try to do it. Um, it's kind of like, <sighs> like, like, like rolling his tongue, but making a noise. Like, <sighs> I can't. I can't really do it. That's why I need to get it on on video um, and put it all together. But it's like that noise and. I noticed it 
and his therapist noticed it and when they realized it I said you know what because when you make that sound it vibrates your whole it, you like that vibration like just goes through your jaw and up your head and 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 then the sound especially the way that he makes it I'm not making it right I don't know how he does it but he just and, and it's certain times that I feel like the sound and the vibration are what he is stimming from and I don't know what kind of emotion he feels because there's times where he's just very content not excited when he's when he's excited he does the flapping or when he's happy he does the, the flapping of his hands um but that sort of stem happens off and on at random times and after talking with his therapist we can't really determine exactly what emotion is causing that stem um, or what situation is causing that stem um, Another stem that he does that he has been doing for quite some time now is um, he'll squint and he'll like like cock his head to the side and he'll squint and he does this mainly when he's coloring or when he's writing he'll start to really get into it with that little this back and forth motion especially with coloring it's like this back and forth motion and then you'll just notice him like take his eyes off the paper and look up and like squint and it I guess it's that sensation that just causes that type of reaction um, but then the other day I think uh, in the last two vlogs that I did the one where they're playing the fishing game he did that stem I didn't get a real good angle to show you guys the, the squint but he turned his head and I was like wait a minute he's stemming and he normally does that stem when he's writing or when he's coloring so it threw me off because I was like, okay, he's not doing this motion. He's holding the little plastic fishing pole. So, huh. <laughs> so that's what, I mean, it's, it's very hard to determine or to get inside an autistic person's head unless they are able to expressively communicate, well, I do this stem because... Ricky's not there yet. Hopefully, hopefully, hopefully in the very near future. And from the progress that he has been making in therapy, I feel like it'll be pretty soon that I can ask him, you know, maybe when he's like seven or eight years old, you know, that, that soon. <laughs> That'll be in the next three years, two to three years. So I feel like then I can ask him, why do you do that? And he'll say, well, I do it because fill in the blank but right now I have to try to figure it out because that communication barrier is still there so the next stem that he does kind of pertains to the squinting and it's really when he kind of compiles all of his stems all together the well he does rocking um, he does the flapping he does the the noise with his mouth and then he'll do some squinting he won't like arch his head to the side but he'll squint is when he is watching certain videos on YouTube I don't know why it is but he does all of them together the videos that I'm speaking of maybe some people who have children on the spectrum can relate to this they find these videos that are like opening credits rather it's the theme song to uh, Spongebob or the opening credits to 20th Century Fox or uh, Warner Brothers 
like the movie opening credits right before the movie is to start he finds these people make these videos and they distort the sound and they distort the color repeat a certain part of it over and over and over again and it's like where do you find these like <laughs> who's putting them out and how are our children finding these? It's the craziest thing. Um, but I have talked to other parents who are in the autism community and they all say, yeah, my kid finds these weird distorted videos and they'll watch them over and over and over again. And the thing with Ricky is he'll be like holding his tablet or a phone and he'll be like stimming. And then at a certain time, he'll put his hand, like he'll squint and he'll put his hand over and he'll keep doing it at a certain time in the video. I mean, it's it, that's why I say I, I need to carefully watch him within a week and always have this camera with me so that I can capture these moments so I can show you guys what this stem looks like because it's, it's really hard to explain and hopefully I'm explaining it well enough for you to understand. I don't know if, if it's the audio with the visual stimulation that comes from these videos, but he'll rock, he'll shake, he'll do that sound, he'll squint, and then he'll put his hand over. And it's a certain point in time in the video that he'll put his hand over it and he'll do this. So um, those are the main stems that my son has. Next topic that I want to talk about can be a little touchy, especially if you are on the spectrum or if you have a child who is on the spectrum, it can be a little touchy. Normally, if you are a parent who feels like your child is on the spectrum and you are looking for information and you come across stimming and you kind of dive into the subject of stimming, one of the big things that you see aside from people explaining what stem stimming is is you'll see should you stop your child from stimming and this has been quite a debatable subject in the autism community and i can see why for certain reasons um i will just say in my own opinion and my own experience with uh, my son stimming, the way that he stems, if someone was to ask me, are you gonna stop him from doing that? Are you gonna try to get him to quit that type of behavior? My answer very quickly would be absolutely not. I'm not gonna stop my child from stimming. And the reason for that is is it's not hurting him and it's not hurting anyone around him it is his way of regulating his body with the emotion that is pumping through him it is a way to compute to his brain we're excited and it's okay because i feel like when you stop the positive stimming it's hard for them to regulate themselves because their brain isn't like a neurotypical person's brain. They have to have those ways of accepting the information that their brain is taking in. Like I said, with the input comes the output and it's okay. It's okay for them to stem. They're not hurting anyone. Now, I, I must say, where I see how this debate can get a little touchy is there with the self-injurious stems that some people on the spectrum have, the hitting, the biting, the scratching, the pinching, all of that, I feel like that should be stopped because that's not okay. I mean, I've, I've seen people with like, like scratches all up and down their arms and bruises and 
that sort of thing and that, that's not okay but that's where I'm not an expert and because my my son at this point in time my son does not have those types of stems I haven't looked further into this type of subject to see okay what can be done to stop them and have them regulate themselves in a positive manner now if it's a sensory if they are overloaded with something sensory whether it's light sound a smell or something like that well taking that away taking them out of that environment would be a way for them to stop the self-injury types of stems but if they are expressing that stem because they can't regulate their their anger emotion or their sad emotion or their frustration then I think that dives a little bit more to that individual and why that individual is feeling the way that they are feeling that's why I can't really speak on that part but when you look into stimming and you look into people talking about stopping people on the spectrum from stimming, there are certain reasons. And like, for instance, if you get your child into ABA therapy, some ABA therapies, they express that some of their goals is to help your child to stop stimming. And this is one reason, one little reason, why I decided that ABA therapy was not the best route for Ricky. That's just one reason. The other reason is because of my hands-on working with Ricky during the day and then his school and then his in-home therapy, he's thriving, he's progressing. So at this point in time, I don't feel like ABA therapy is the right step for him at this at this moment but my opinion my answer might change a few months or a few years from now depending on if he continues to progress the way that he is and for right now I don't want him in ABA therapy and from what I've read about them stopping the stems I don't want Ricky to stop stimming. I, I, as long as he is happy, as long as he is able to function, it's not hurting anyone. It's not hurting him. So why stop it? There's no point. There's no point. Stop it. I do understand as someone gets older, who's on the spectrum and they get older when you see a person stimming how it might come off as that person might be on a controlled substance or might be under the influence of something I have seen where there was an instance with a boy who looked like he was maybe 15 or 16 years old and a police officer had mistaken him for someone under the influence I can see where and really that's our society needing to be more educated with people on the spectrum because that's one thing that I am a little worried about with Ricky if he continues to stem if someone looks at him and goes oh I need to call the cops because the way that he's like moving and doing certain things he might be on drugs or something and then if the police officer doesn't know what stimming is it's so easy for them to go he's under the influence let's try to take them down and that just turns into wow <laughs> I mean that's a whole nother subject but I and this is one of the big reasons why I'm doing this video I, I want people to become aware of what it is and that it's not a bad thing and it's it shouldn't be viewed as weird or anything like that when you are educated when when you are exposed to that certain thing I, I mean now there are times where I'm in public and I see a child and for a second I see them stem and I'm thinking 
right on man <laughs> regulate yourself that's right on I just wish more people could be that way hence why I'm doing these videos really I hope that I have informed you guys a little better on what stimming is um, if there is anything that you feel like I have left out that pertains to this subject please let me know in the comments below I would love to hear from you guys really I I think I'm gonna do videos on meltdowns and videos on transitioning and videos on the early signs like what I saw in Ricky that can be easily overlooked I'll I'll plan out some more videos um, for a later date but right now I hope that you guys enjoyed this video if you did click that thumbs up button um, if you haven't already and you want to become a part of the awesome family because we would love to have you please click on that subscribe button our ultimate goal and I hope that that message got through to you guys through this video our ultimate goal is to raise awareness for our children on the spectrum which ultimately opens the door to acceptance and that's what we want for all our kids right so hit the subscribe button when you hit the subscribe button there will be a bell button that pops up click on that bell button because it'll let you know when we upload our next video i hope you guys are having a great week and we will see y'all tomorrow bye